Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 28th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Baltimore, Maryland. Didier today concluded his three-part diary about a resume PDF that he received. If you remember, one of the sticking points kind of was an embedded JPEG that Didier wasn't really all that sure about. Well, he now managed to sort of finally analyze it and turns out JPEG structures, they are quite complex and Didier goes into quite a bit of detail about how JPEGs are composed. And of course, he has a Python tool for you to help you analyze JPEGs. In the end, the JPEG didn't look malicious, but of course, one of the hardest things in info security is to prove that something is not malicious or not compromised. So he still leaves the opening here that maybe there's actually an exploit that's being triggered in some JPEG viewers, but uh, nothing that he was able to detect. Nevertheless, he managed to disassemble the entire JPEG structure and really explain quite well how JPEGs are composed and how to analyze them. And Linux 4.1.4 was released and with that there are some quite interesting security enhancements that were introduced. First of all, the Linux kernel now does support the AMD version of secure memory encryption. Now this is only supported on the latest AMD processors. Intel took a little bit uh, different approach with SGX which really more isolates different memory areas from each other. So one process cannot necessarily read memory from another process. AMD also has a second uh, sort of version of their encryption, which is secure encrypted virtualization. That part is not yet implemented and it would allow the hypervisor like Send, for example, to isolate memory from different virtual machines better. In addition, Linux now also supports some of the cold boot attack protections that have been implemented in recent BIOSes. The link I'll use in the show notes uh, will link to a little bit an older article, not necessarily about this latest Linux version, but I think it does a pretty good job in explaining uh, these various security features. Well, and let's stick with modern CPU security features here for a bit. In ARM processors, you typically find a trust zone. This is a special area on the CPU where you can store cryptographic keys and the like, and Android for example, supports it. Well, uh, researchers now found an attack that they call clock screw that will allow an attacker to actually access this trust zone, also write self-signed code into the trust zone via the exploitation of some energy management features. The attack uses an energy saving feature, dynamic voltage and frequency scaling or DVFS that can be used by software in order to change the voltage and the frequency the processor is operating at in order to operate the processor more energy efficient. The problem is that these parameters can be changed over a fairly wide range, which then can lead to some instability in the processor which in turn leads to the violation of some security features just because the calculations necessary to enforce these security features are no longer executed correctly. So this is certainly not a simple attack, but in the paper they demonstrate how they were able to bypass security features on Android, including some security features implemented in hardware like trusted zones. Overall, they compare it somewhat to the Rowhammer attack. It is sort of one of those mix of software and hardware attacks where software is really being used to stress the hardware beyond its design limits in order to then cause some unpredicted behavior. 
And to make things worse, there is no simple fix for this. In order to prevent this attack, the system really has to be somewhat redesigned. Some of these frequency and voltage ranges have to be probably more constrained, which of course could lead to less energy efficient systems. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.